What's up, Budget Wargamer? We are back, and we've got some new announcements from Games Workshop. These are new releases that will be available for pre-order next Saturday, so that's not the stuff that just came out yesterday for pre-order. This is stuff you'll have to wait another five to six days in order to pre-order for yourself, and we're going to dive into that because we have some of the Ideneth Deepkin that are going to be on here, as well as some announcements from Blood Bowl and from Necromunda. Some of those sweet models from Necromunda we're going to dive into here very shortly. And I want to take a moment to look through some of the people who have recently joined the channel. And I want to thank those guys who have recently signed up because I value all of your support. If this is your first time listening to one of my videos, make sure you hit the like button to let people know you like hearing about news and announcements from Warhammer 40,000. As well as the other games that we cover because we do cover games from other um, hobby companies out there as well. And then hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to this channel already. I definitely appreciate your support as we are at about 358 subscribers currently and we are well on our way towards 1,000 and we are getting the momentum behind us. So let's take a moment and look to see who just recently signed up and subscribed to the channel. We've got Joel Simpf. Thank you very much, sir. Bill Grady. Thank you for your support. Shane Cuss and a few more coming in here. Ricardo Cesari. Thank you very much. Apologies if I butchered the last name. Gavaka signing up here you must be following along for that star wars legion stuff of which people have uh, not watched as much as the games workshop videos and then kaiju predator subscribing since our last video so that's quite a few of you that we've picked up and we appreciate each and every single one of you guys for being a part of this channel comment below if you've got some stuff that you'd like for me to cover or if you have any input on some of the stuff we're about to go over right now so let's dive straight in if you ever want to know what's going on in the warhammer and warhammer 40,000 universe head on over to the warhammer community website that's warhammer-community.com it's a great place to get your news and it's not the only place that leaks information, but it's where Games Workshop has been regularly putting out new announcements. So this is one from today. Now, next week's pre-orders for the Iden and Deepkin is going to be a little light. We still have yet to see the cavalry units up for pre-order or the turtles, but we have three of the character models that are coming up here. And this is the Isharan Tidecaster. Not the best model in the army, if I may say so myself, but I do really dig the broken statue that it's standing on top of. So there's little bits and elements of each of these models that I do think is pretty cool, but I'm not a big fan of this model in particular, and we'll skip on those special rules. This one's a little bit cooler, although I don't know what it will do in terms of game gameplay, but the Asharan Soul Scryers seem to be able to... Um, have a special ability called Seeker of Souls here. We'll take a look at this. So at the start of your charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 24 inches of this model that is visible to them. If you do so, you must add three to charge rolls for friendly Ideneth Deepkin units that are within 12 inches of that unit. However, the first model to be moved from each unit that receives this modifier must finish their charge move within half an inch of that unit or their charge will fail. So rather than ending within one inch, it's a little bit of, of a of a tighter limitation, but it's definitely going to help you get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Not too bad. This is actually the cooler model in terms of what I think its special rules do, and it reminds me a little bit of Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. At least the mask seems to remind me of that. But this is the Asharan Soul Render, which can steal the souls from your enemy and use them to regenerate your Namarti units. So if you're looking to pick up some of the Namarti Reavers or the Namarti Thralls to flesh out your battle line units, at least we know the Namarti Thralls are a battle line unit, and that conditionally, if you take an Achillean King, you can supposedly use Namarti Reavers as battle line units. So this would be a good buff for that, where it says that you can, at the end of your battle shock phase, pick a friendly Namarti unit wholly within 12 inches of this, of this model and roll a D3. Return a number of slain models to the unit you picked up to the value of the roll. Add one to the D3 roll for each enemy model that was slain by damage caused by this model's talent hook in the combat phase of the same turn. So really, this guy's every single <clears throat> battle shock phase, he's going to be dealing out D3 resurrections or D3, yes, up to the slain model. So D3 up to D3 resurrections within 12 inches plus one for everybody he kills with his particular melee weapon. So incentive to get him into hand-to-hand -hand combat, of which we're pretty sure he must be pretty gnarly given the the obesity of that weapon or the bulk of that weapon. But enough of those guys, I'm sure through and through, despite the fact they're a very interesting army, you guys may be tiring of news and announcements of Ideneth Deepkin because they are pushing that release out there. Now on my tabletop, <clears throat> I finally 
started working on my first of the Gene Stealer Colts models, of which I'm building out to do 40k kill team, and also because they can be played in Necromunda. I'm probably only going to use the one box of 10 miniatures, unless there's a reason to buy more than that for either of those games, but I'm working on different helmet variations because I don't want to do them up as Gene Stealer Colt. I actually want to use the models because I like their armor suits. I think it's very aggro and industrial. But I want to try to mock them up to what they may have looked like beforehand. And I've seen where some people are using the, the Adeptus Mechanicus helmets. But I'm using something from Anvil Industry. And it doesn't quite fit in there. So I'm going to have to figure out how to trim it up and, and whether I like the look of it. I definitely like the look of the visor. But I'll have to show you guys that in another video. So comment below if you're looking at getting involved into 40k kill team when the rules come out here. But let's dive into Necromunda. Another place I can use these guys. I'm definitely looking forward to this unit. This is the new gang that are the Vansar. So these are one of the strangest armies that are in Necromunda. And they're the most technologically advanced. And you can tell from the energy shield that one of the guys is carrying. They've got like a plasma cannon of sorts. But just look at how heavily armored they are. How technologically advanced their weaponry is. We've got dual pistol wielding people. We've got some carbines that we've never seen before in the 40k universe. Um, everything just looks to be unique. So this would make a really interesting unit to proxy in for some Astra Militarum. Of which you could use these guys as stormtroopers. And this would be a much more affordable way to flesh out an army of stormtroopers at about $40 per box of 10 models, as opposed to $35 or so dollars for a box of five of each of those guys. So this, um, I don't know what you would use for vehicles. You know, maybe, maybe they're more of like a jet bike looking type of army, at least to me. Maybe that's because some of their helmets appear to be a little bit dark Eldar-ish, and I don't know where they get their technology or if it's all home homegrown stuff. But these guys, the House Van Sar gang, are just really a cool unit and it's actually next week's pre-order unit that I'm most excited about and it's something that's worth picking up because in the world of Necromunda you buy one box you got your whole army so that's basically the gist of the game although we do know that there's going to be some potential special characters and things like that coming out and Forge World has released some hired guns and things like that so there are some other things coming out such as a Vansar themed dice set some blank cards and the Vansar gang cards so there's going to be quite a bit of that coming out now, Blood Bowl, we've got a new unit called, or new um, team called the Blood Lords, or Doom, or sorry, I think they're called the Doom Lords. Let's double check that, Doom Lords. But one thing I thought was interesting is that I don't see anybody on this team holding the football, unlike most of the other teams where you see somebody who's obviously a quarterback team. This team, I like the Beastmen, and it's been a while since we've seen new plastic Beastmen models come out from Warhammer. Although this is clearly not something for Age of Sigmar, I've got my Beastman army sitting in the um, half assembled and half in the um, display shelf, but I haven't painted any of it up because I haven't decided if I'm going to modify it up and all that. But I just thought it was interesting that really there's this army looks more like it's going to come in and knock out all your characters and put them on the bench or in on a stretcher more so than actually there to play the game. So that is the Doom Lords for Blood Bowl if you're looking at picking those guys up. And that's going to be one of the pre-orders for next week's games. There's also the first edition coming out of a Blood Bowl magazine. Not sure how long this is actually going to be in publication because as we know, most of these specialist games end up getting a, f a short print run of these types of magazines. But it does seem like a great way, in addition to the White Dwarf, where the Blood Bowl community can not only get out some dedicated news, but also get out some new rules and some new new hobby stuff about their awesome and fast-paced game. So this is Spike's number one edition, of which you will be able to pre-order supposedly for next week. And then there's going to be team card packs. So there's the Chaos Chosen team, aka the Doom Lords, the Skaven team, and then also... 24 star players so if you want cards for the star players in the game you're gonna have to pick that up otherwise you just keep playing as you are so that's next week's pre-orders comment below what's most exciting to you i think you could tell it's definitely the house vansar for me and then if you were to pick up house vansar would you use them in necromunda or would you be more excited about using them as a 40k kill team type of army that you can modify up and proxy as something else or using them as some sort of super elite stormtrooper, Astra Militarum, or something else in the Warhammer 40k universe. Talk to you guys soon. This is Budget Wargamer, and stay tuned for some more episodes.